taken a few of those Filipino values. And uh, then the question is, how do we present a relevant gospel into that context? How do you move the questions? How do you move from living in fear and being subject to the spirits to freedom and power over the spirits? It's a very different question to the question of Westerners. It's a, a question of, well, there's this distant God and there's this dead Jesus on the cross with a crown of thorns and blood dripping that hangs in the Catholic churches. But you're talking of a living, and we're talking of a living God who's risen. He's not on the cross. He's risen. He rose from the grave. He's victorious over Satan. How can you have a connection to this, this living God? And in a context where Mary is the mediator and the saints and the angels are mediators and, um, and constantly we're living in, in fear of uh, spirits um, and the saints, there's a question of how then do we move to a place where we are reigning with Christ for in rising from the dead, he vanquished Satan. He overcame Satan. So he is the only mediator between God and man. According to 1 Timothy 2 and verse 5, so we reign with him without fear. We have authority over the high spirits, the small spirits, and uh, curses, and you can be set free from the curses and from the power of these spirits and live in a life of victory so what do you need to do how do you move from being subject to the spirits to freedom and power trusted in the cross jesus blood vanquished satan first john chapter 4 and verse 4 you dear children are from god and have overcome them because the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the world. So repent of any dealings with the spirits. Uh, put away any charms, any amulets, bracelets. Put away the idols where they have some degree of control over you. Renounce any dedication to the spirits. Command any spirits to depart from your house, from your family, from yourself. I remember one friend uh, brother of a friend of mine, Nato, who came to the Lord and we were sitting doing Bible study in his room. And he said to me, do you know anything about spirits? So, uh, a little. And he said, well, there's a spirit in this room. So I said, well, let's pray. And so we just prayed and we heard the spirit rushing down the stairs and out of the door of the house. So this is important as people are coming to know the Lord that immediately you deal with any past relationship to the Spirit. So as they come to know the Lord, they are fully set free. Who would not receive a gospel like this in a culture like this? Take a minute then and um, in your thinking, analyze what would be the equivalent within your cultural mandate. If you, if you know of it, uh, you may not be aware of who the spirits are, that's an interesting discussion with people. Where do they dwell? Which are more powerful? Which, what are the activities of which spirits? Which ones do you appease for which realities? Now I want to move to a progression related to cultural discipleship in one particular area, the nature of God. And this is a progression that underlies uh, uh, new patterns of discipling in the Philippines. Up to the 1970s, that's after 70 years of missions work, all the discipleship materials in the Philippines were translations of U.S. materials. Can you believe that? But by analyzing from the cultural values, then this provides a way of designing progressions based on cultural values as Bible study materials. And Jean Tabor, our leader with the Navigators at the time, and then Bien Labrera, now a Baptist pastor and others, developed a whole new set of Bible study materials based from cultural values to begin with. So um, 
we have to start with uh, this, the nature of God and, and uh, we've mentioned the spirit world, we've mentioned conversion from shame, uh, as of against conversion from guilt. So this phrase here is a, it's a shame-based culture, not a guilt-based culture. So in the Western world, working from Paul's book to the Romans, all about the law, uh, we can be saved from sin. That doesn't make as much sense as Isaiah 53. that says Jesus took our shame. The concept of the family of God becomes a building block, a starting block in terms of basic discipleship. Fatherhood and the nature of fatherhood. And some older religious beliefs are replaced and, and a, a newer concept of God is developed. Here's the overview, which you probably can't read on the screen, but we're starting with some starting points on the left and move step by step to a, a fully biblical concept of God. Let's start with the culture. God is unreachable. We've mentioned that. Mary is a mediatrix. Saints and mediators, spirits of the dead can intercede. These can be appeased or offended. God is capricious. God in the Filipino father role. And the father's role is uh, bifurcated. There is a very positive role of the father providing, of the father providing uh, financially um, and carrying the load for the children. There's also a capriciousness within the father role. Often discipline in the early years is not there. Children are guided not according to right and wrong, but uh, to please. And then at the age of about seven, suddenly there is a discipline that's brought and the children cannot really understand when it's real, realistic, when it's uh, reasonable and when it's not. So from the starting points then, Discipleship, you cover topics in terms of a God who wants to listen, a God to whom we can talk, a God who is forgiving, um, a God who is near to us. Um, and Mary um, is respected. She's the mother of Jesus, but she's not the mother of God. That's for real. Um, and so we don't go to her with our prayers and that. Uh, that's a pretty quick thing people pick up very quickly based on First Timothy chapter um, 2, verse 5 there. The saints are mediators not in the scriptures. They're not. They're respected. They're heroes of all. But they're not mediators between us and God. The spirits of the dead can intercede. Well, contact with the spirits is forbidden in the scriptures. So Jesus is the only mediator. Jesus is the victor over all of these spirits and the spirit world. God is capricious. Well, no, biblically, God is faithful. He sustains the universe. He holds everything in a system, systematic uh, manner. Um, and the father role is the positive aspects and the negative aspects is the word sakop, which means uh, it's a bit like a, an oxen carrying a yoke. And it's a father carrying the yoke for the children. And, and this is a very positive role. So you take the positive roles of fatherhood and family. So you've got the starting points. You've got some teaching. And so you get these ideas of God seeking our fellowship. Jesus is the only mediator. God is powerful. God is just. And then these build even further to God wants us to pray to him. God answers prayer. And so experiencing that with young believers. And he, he wants to be our friend and our companion. So the idea that God loves us and that love is based on a consistency, on his justice. Um, and then God's father role. So all of these lead to this biblical concept of God. And this takes time to build as people are in the scriptures, but step by step it becomes the new maze way, the new mindset, the cultural mindset of the Christian Filipino. Mm -hmm.